Elgato finally released Wavelink 2, which adds some new features. In this video, I'm taking a quick look at the new release to see how well it works on Mac, and if it finally makes the XLR dock usable. And if you're a streamer, there's one thing you need to be aware of when using Wavelink, and I'll get to that in a few minutes. And I apologize for the Ecamm Live watermark. I'm using the trial version to see how well it works, and they force their logo upon us as the only limitation of the demo. So first off, you need to be running Mac OS 14.2 or newer. Now let's take a look at the main new features. So we've got voice focus, which gives your microphone studio grade quality. Not only does it remove unwanted background noise, it also addresses reverb and can give the impression of being in a fully sound treated studio environment. Voice Focus is powered by AI Acoustics. Voice Focus is only available on Elgato's mics and audio interfaces, though. I can't really test out the Voice Focus because I record in a decent sounding space, but I expect it to sound like all of the other real-time voice isolation options I've run across, which means that it will improve poor audio, but if we're being honest, they really don't provide studio-grade quality. I wish companies would stop using this cliche because it's just inaccurate. They tend to make things sound very processed and lacking any acoustic information at all. Next up, we have one-click audio routing. I've been using a beta version of version 2.0 for a while, so I'm not sure how the audio routing was done in version 1. But Elgato has made it dead simple in version 2 to route your audio and set up your mixes. Next up, we've got Sound Check, which lets you record a short clip of audio that you can loop while toggling on and off audio effects or adjusting them so you can hear how things will sound with the processing on. Like Voice Focus, this feature is also only available if you're using Elgato products. In addition to these features, they've added a mute button in the software. They've made it easier to integrate with a Stream Deck. Elgato's also added some quality of life enhancements like app grouping, input channel renaming, and the ability to hide unused channels. There's also a new effect available in the Elgato marketplace, and it's the Elgato DSer. The deesser looks like it probably analyzes your audio and automatically determines the settings you'll need for your voice. There's also an advanced mode that allows you to make adjustments if you want to fine tune it. And I want to pause things here for just a second and ask that if you're enjoying this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more of my content. If you watched my six month review of the XLR dock, you'll know that there were two issues for Mac users. The official release flat out lacked some essential features that the XLR dock needed to be, I guess, remotely functional. Things like not being able to turn on phantom power and there were some latency issues. The version two beta solved these problems, but it was buggy. And the biggest issue I had with it was, since I use another audio interface as my main audio device, I cannot have Wavelink running and hear music or other audio through my speakers. The good news is that I haven't run into any of those issues with this official release of version 2. I love how simple Elgato has made it to route audio and create two mixes. One for you, and one for your audience if you're a streamer. There is one big drawback when using Wavelink, and I didn't really think about this until I started looking at some of the alternatives for Wavelink. The one big negative about Wavelink is how much processing power it takes up when the app is running. And you have to keep it running in order to hear any audio. For reference, I'm using an M1 Max Mac Studio, and Activity Monitor shows that it has a CPU usage of 
30 to 40 percent. This isn't enough to cause problems for day-to-day -day use on an M-Series Mac, but it is something to keep an eye on if you are a live streamer. Since live streaming takes a good amount of CPU itself, having something like Wavelink taking up even more might be not ideal. To give a comparison, Ginger Audio's caster takes up about 12 to 15 percent and it seems to be almost identical to Wavelink. And Rogue Amoeba's loopback doesn't even have to run to be able to route the audio, so it doesn't take up any additional CPU. So to sum it up, yes, version 2 of Wavelink finally makes the XLR dock a usable and functional audio interface for streamers and content creators. Wavelink was really the missing piece, and they fixed all of the issues I ran into when using the version 2 beta releases. I will say that I can't really fully recommend the XLR dock if you're using a dynamic mic that needs a good amount of gain, because the preamp is noisy, as is the headphone amp. The headphone noise may not be much of an issue if you always have audio playing, but for me, it's too much if I have my headphones on because like, I'm waiting for someone to join a call. So what about you? If you've been using version 1 of Wavelink, how does version 2 compare? Are you a frustrated XLR dock owner? Have you tried version 2? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.